So what does it mean for A not to be a subset of B? Well, let's think about it for a second. A is a subset of B if every element of A is an element of B. So A isn't a subset of B if this isn't true. What does it mean for that not to be true? It means that there's got to be some element of A that isn't inside B. So if we draw a little picture of it, if, if this is B, and that's A, this is kind of the picture of A being a subset of B. So in order for that not to be true, we only have to have one bit of A sticking out, right? We don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be the entire of A sticking out, it just has to be some part of A sticking out. In that case, this bit sticking out would show that A wasn't a subset of B. So how do we say that formally? We say, so let me draw a box around that picture, A is not a subset of B means that there exists an element of A that exists an element of of A such that X is not in B. I feel an aside about logic coming on. It's very important to get these notions of logical implication correct going in all possible directions. So let's think about that for a second. Side on logical implications. So the basic, the basic statement, well, the thing that we had just now, we have x is in A implies x is in B, right? This is not the same as, it's not the same as if we go the other way around x is in B implies x is in A, right? This one said A is a subset of B, that one says B is a subset of A. What I've done here is I've gone backwards. That is not the same thing. However, it is the same as it is the same as x is not in B implies x is not in A. So if we just draw our little picture again, here's B and here's A, right? So this is the picture of this statement here, right? X is in A implies X is in B. So here, what we're saying is, if X is even outside of B, then it can't possibly be inside of A, right? These are saying the same things. If X is outside of B, then it can't possibly be in A. So to have a more concrete example, uh, let's think of a concrete example. Say, Yorkshire. I'm in Yorkshire, and Yorkshire is inside England. So here's Yorkshire, and here's England. So what we've got here is if you're inside Yorkshire, then you're definitely inside England, right? That's not the same as saying if you're inside England, you're definitely inside Yorkshire. That's just not true. You can be in England without being in Yorkshire, right? However, if you're not in England, then you certainly can't possibly be in Yorkshire. So that is the same statement as saying that if you're in Yorkshire, then you're definitely in England. So if you're a bit confused about that, then you should definitely have a little think about it. Now, this is called the converse of the original statement. This one is called the contrapositive because what we've done in this one is we've just gone backwards. But what we've done in this one is that we've taken the opposite of the second statement and we've gone towards the opposite of the first statement. So in general, in general, um, let's write this more precisely, 
If we start with a statement P implies Q, then the converse is Q implies P. The contrapositive is not Q implies not P. The converse, the converse of a statement has absolutely nothing to do with the statement. The statement could be true and the converse false, or the other way around, or both could be true or both could be false. So, for example, let me think of an example. Um, so, supposing I say something like, um, uh, if if I if I get up very early in the morning, I feel virtuous. Okay, it, getting up very early in the morning implies me feeling virtuous, right? But that does that tell you anything about whether if I feel virtuous, I get up early in the morning? It doesn't, does it? Because all I said was that after I've got up very early in the morning, I will feel virtuous. But just because I got up early, um, just because I'm feeling virtuous, doesn't mean that I got up early in the morning. Let me try and think of a better example. If you win the lottery, you'll have millions of pounds in your bank account, right? But if you've got millions of pounds in your bank account, does that mean you won the lottery? No, not necessarily. It might mean that you won the lottery, but it doesn't necessarily mean you won the lottery, right? However, if you haven't got millions of pounds in your bank account, then that certainly means that you didn't just win the lottery. Okay. So now let me write up lots of different statements that we should think about. Um, here are some different ways of saying the same thing. Mm. Maybe this needs to wait until the next video.